Hi guys, PD here, welcome to the channel, welcome to another new video. Today I want to talk about something that's been really bothering me, it's been on my mind for quite a while. I have been picking up a bit of a divide in the VR community, watching my favourite podcast, watching my favourite YouTubers, and this topic is slowly creeping into the equation of VR guys. I think it's something we need to discuss, and I also think it's something we should agree on going forward with VR. Now, I'm no scientist, I'm no philosopher. This is just something that I've been thinking about for a long, long while. And it's all based on my observations of what's happening in the VR community. You guys know me, I've been in the VR community for about four years. I've seen it grow, I've seen the trends, and I've also seen this divide. Now, it's not a major divide, guys. It's a subtle divide, but it's really got me thinking at night. And I wake up most nights thinking about this topic and what's the best way to resolve it. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the way I think this should all be resolved. And this video is called The Three States of VR. Because thinking about it, I believe there are three different states to VR. And everyone involved in the VR community, whether it be a fan, a YouTuber, a news outlet, we've all got something in common with one of these three states. Now the main reason why I've made this video and why I'm categorizing these three states, which I believe are the three main principles of VR in this current time, to get a better understanding of the principles involved in VR and how it affects everybody in different ways. Like I said guys, this is my own opinion. You might have your own opinions. Feel free to leave those opinions in the description below. Also, if you feel I've left something out, again, Leave the information in the description below and we'll try and address it in the future. So what are the three states of VR according to me and why have I made this video? I'm going to start with state one guys. Okay, so what is state one? For me, state one is full immersion. That means it's a standing experience. You've got full head tracking. You've got haptics. Haptics in the motion controllers and you've got full motion again with the motion controllers and you've got the backup of external devices like the Wuja haptic vest and the B haptic vest. To a lot of people in the VR community state one is the only way to play VR. Now myself I disagree with that and that's the reason why I've got the other two states. So you might be watching this video now and you might be a state one VR enthusiast and you agree 100% with this state. And this is the only way for you to play VR. Nothing else really compares. So this is state one of VR. So my example of a state one game will be a game like Half-Life Alex, full immersion, haptic, standing up, full head tracking, that sort of thing. That's a state one VR game for me. And I can guarantee there are some people in the VR community that is the only way to play VR games. Again, this is all based on what I've heard over the years from my favorite VR podcast and some of my favorite VR YouTubers. Okay, so state two, I've called it semi-immersion. Now for me, state two is a standing or seated experience. You've still got head tracking. You might use VR mods. You might use a game controller and you might use some disability aids, also external aids. So for me, an example of a state 2 VR game is Alien Isolation with the Mother VR mod. That's a game you can play standing up with the motion controllers, or you can play seated. You've got head tracking, you're using a mod. Now some people might be disabled guys, they can't play these games with two hands, motion controllers, they can only play these games sitting down. I have had many comments from people who are disabled asking me for games they can play in VR seated. And these people might have to use like a, a joypad. And even though these games might be played seated and you use VR mods, you can still use haptic vests. So for me, that is my interpretation of a state two VR game. Some people would disagree that this is not true VR. They don't agree with it. They don't agree with sitting down, that sort of thing. And some people will claim today 
that playing a VR game with a gamepad is not true VR. And I have to remind those people, two years ago, when the Oculus Rift CV1 came out, when you brought the uh, CV1 pack, you had the headset, so you had a VR headset, and inside the box was an Xbox controller. Back in those days, you did not have motion controllers, you had to play VR games with an Xbox controller. Back then we had some really amazing games, we had like Kronos, Edge of Nowhere. So for those people who tell me that playing a VR game with a gamepad is not VR, two years ago you got a VR headset, you had to play these games with an Xbox controller and going through your mind was this is not real VR. I don't believe that. We've fallen into the trap, we're so used to modern day technology, we've forgotten our roots, we forgot the days when VR you could only play with a gamepad. And I would just like to remind those people that that was a thing and for some people that is still a thing, it's still viable. Moving on to state 3, I've called state 3 experimental immersion. So what is experimental immersion in VR? It's a standing or seated experience. You've got very limited head tracking. You have to use a gamepad or the mouse and keyboard. You use programs like Helix VR or Vorpex to inject 3D into flat games. These games also work with external aids like the Wuja haptic vest. Now personally for me guys, I'm a fan of all three states and I'm going to say on the record right now and I'm sure a lot of people who agree with me that state one is the most important, state two is next, and state three is the last resort. So for me, I do prefer a VR game that's been built from the ground up, full head tracking, full motion controls, that sort of thing. State two is the next best thing, guys. You've got VR mods that turn flat games into a proper VR experience. State three is the last resort for me, and I can guarantee that the same people who like these types of games, same as me, will say the same thing. State 1 is the best, then State 2, and then State 3. Now the main reason why I like State 3 and the reason why I tend to promote these types of experiences on my channel, using Vorpex, Helix Vision Mod, that sort of thing. Back before VR was a thing guys, you're talking about 10 to 12 years ago, I was really big on 3D gaming, uh, NVIDIA had released some 3D graphics cards, they had proper drivers, I had some special glasses, they were called Elsa 3D glasses and they let me play flat games on a 3D screen. Now because of my love for VR and my nostalgia for 3D gaming, programs like Vorpex allow me to go back in time, play the games I can't normally play in VR on a 3D screen and it takes me right back to the days where I used to play games in 3D and for me Playing games in 3D is more immersive than playing games on a flat screen. I would rather be inside a world playing games like Iron of Lion Forest, Little Nightmares 2 in a 3D world rather than playing on a flat screen monitor. That's a no brainer. Now Vorpex is not for everybody. Vorpex is not going to compete with State 1 and State 2. That's a guarantee guys. Every now and then Vorpex does have a few leaps and bounds. For example, I've been talking to Ralph, the creator of Vorpex, and he's constantly improving the program. So we're starting to get better 3D, more immersion, more head tracking, that sort of thing. And I know it's not for everybody. For some people in VR, State 3, using Vorpex, is a thing. People love it. We are all in this together, guys. Everybody into VR, we're all in this together. My main concern is when somebody is negative towards a program like Vorpex or VR mods and they start to become elitist and tell everyone it's not true VR when for some of us it is VR. It's all the same thing. I can quite happily play a VR game State 1, State 2, State 3 and I can still have an amazing time guys. It doesn't matter what tools I use. It doesn't matter if I use a gamepad. I'm still immersed in the world. One of the main reasons why I'm seeing a rapid growth in people liking State 3 VR gaming, using programs like Vorpex, people are crying out 
the AAA VR experiences. In this current VR market guys, we are not getting those experiences. Now in State 2, we are getting Red Dead Redemption 2 with VR mods. We are getting Risk of Rain 2 with VR mods. People are loving it. I know we are not going to get Cyberpunk 2077 in VR. So the next best thing for me is to play Cyberpunk in Vorpex in 3D and get a very similar experience to what I get playing a normal VR game. People like different things and that's why VR is so exciting. I don't like beat em up games. I like first person shooters. I'm not going to go out of my way and talk down or disrespect people who play beat em up games in VR. If they want to play beat em up games, let them play the games. It's their choice. In all my years of gaming guys, the VR community is the best gaming community by far. I wanted to stay that way. I want us all to get on. Like I said, I've seen this divide creeping in very, very slowly. And these are my thoughts on the matter on how we can all get together. Can we all agree that we've got different states of VR, but we're all in VR together. We love the medium. We want to showcase the medium. We all know how cool VR is. And it doesn't really matter how we show people VR. I showed my friend a game in Vorpex. It blew him away. He was sat down, no head tracking, but he loved it. He loved it so much, he actually ordered a Quest 2 the same day. We all want VR to grow, so spread the love and enjoy the VR games the way you want to play the games. I hope you found this video entertaining, guys. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. Show it to my little bell. I'll see you in the next one. Remember, VR's for life. Bye. Hi guys, PD here. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for your support. If you want to continue to support this channel, everything you do goes back into the channel. There's various ways to support this channel. We've got a Patreon. You can buy me a coffee. We've got a merch store. You can buy some mugs, t-shirts. And today I'm opening my brand new music shop. Many, many moons ago before I did VR, I used to make electronic music and dance music. I've got quite a few albums available. I've got music, soundtracks and games. And this is my way of giving something back to you for your support. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you next time.